SpongeBob conspiracy number six, the Goofy Goober alien cult theory. Goofy Goober alien death cult theory, and no, I am not joking. This seemingly innocent ice cream parlor is a front for something very sinister. The beloved SpongeBob movie actually has a much darker and tragic meaning to it. I am being 100% serious when I tell you that I think this is my best, most convincing theory yet. And if you thought my evolution- This is, looks like the hardest thing to convince out of anything. An alien death call. Theory. Goofy Goobers is an old-fashioned ice cream parlor that first appeared in the Spongebob movie. It's the very definition of a fun, innocent place for children. So, how on earth did I come to the conclusion that it's actually an alien death cult? I wonder fact, the same thing. What even is an alien death cult? Usually, I also it's a wonder the same thing. that wants you to believe that one day aliens will come to Earth and take the members of the cult to a better place. In the more recent seasons of Spongebob, they've started referencing Goofy Goobers again. In fact, there's even an episode called the goofy newbie where Patrick gets a job there. And it's- They still make SpongeBob episodes. But I first realized there was something more going on here. The story of our ice cream begins with our founder, Reginald Goober, who for some unexplained reason was nicknamed Goofy. In 1842, he headed west in a covered ice cream wagon. He served his warm ice cream on rocks and sticks. From those humble beginnings, Goofy Goober has grown into a multi-billion dollar business. Multi-billion dollar? We only ask that you, one, practice good hygiene, two, maintain good work habits. Nothing out of the ordinary, except there's one more thing that they want you to do. And three, believe in extraterrestrials. Peace, hugs, and ice cream! Huh. And that's actually in the show? That's fucking weird. Bro, that's that you don't even need to explain this. It's just already explained now. They, they it's in the training video. There's no way Goofy Goobers is actually a cult, right? But then I started to rewatch every appearance of Goofy Goobers and things took on a whole new meaning. One of the most basic ideas of a cult is that they strip you of your individuality and make you change your entire identity to be about the cult. And that's exactly what Goofy Goobers does. Everyone there wears Goofy Goober uniforms just like a cult. I mean, what other restaurant has not just employees, but customers that always dress up in a specific- Chuck E. Cheese. No, Chuck E. Cheese only the employees dress like fucking weirdos. I'm a Goofy Goober, you're a Goofy Goober, we're all Goofy Goobers. It is literally just a song- Bro, it's like an innocent song that he's You're a Goofy Goober. I'm a Goofy Goober. Do you see how terrifying that is? There's a scene where SpongeBob and Patrick have to try their best to not sing along to the theme song, and it literally causes them intense pain to not sing along. Don't sing along, Patrick! I remember this because I saw this fucking movie. It's as if they've been brainwashed and physically can't stop themselves from singing it. And you can't even just chalk this up to SpongeBob and Patrick being weirdos. Two other fish can't stop themselves from singing along, even though it means they'll get beat up for it. Goofy, goofy, goober, goobers, yeah! Disney's a cult. Disney's a cult. Oh my god. Disney. Disney adults are brainwashed and a part of a cult. The Disney sniffer, Mickey Mouse, he smells the underwear of the employees. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Should I make my own conspiracy theory video about that? Patrick, <gasps> you've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight. Three years? Dude, I miss so much shit when I watch this movie. Even Somebody just said Disney is homophobic, so it can't be a cult. Are you fucking stupid? Even a Goofy Goober token that reads, In Goofy We Trust, replacing the word God with Goofy. Hmm, hmm. things are looking awfully culty, aren't they? In the new Spongebob spin-off, The Patrick Star Show, we see a Goofy Goober employee- No one What? There's a show? A major part of how cults get so successful is by getting their followers to give them money. Now, obviously Goofy Goobers charges people for ice cream, but they actually convince their followers to trade their money for a made-up Goofy Goober currency. Uh, I don't know what Plankton's paying you, but if you let us go, I can make it worth your while. Why would you give money? Dude, that's the dumbest shit in the world. You can buy the ice cream with five dollars, or 
You can give us $5 and not buy the ice cream, and we'll give you goober bucks, which you can later spend on ice cream. What the fuck? There's a part in the Spongebob movie where Spongebob and Patrick go to Goofy Goobers and eat tons of ice cream all night to the point where they become completely drunk off of it. It's a really funny scene, but it begs the question, why does the ice cream get them drunk? Maybe that's just how ice cream works in the Spongebob universe, and it's the show's way of making a family-friendly alcohol reference. It's alcoholic ice cream. But we've seen other instances where characters eat tons of ice cream and- JESUS! doesn't have this effect on them. Alright, well, maybe this was just a one-time gag for the movie, and it's not a consistent part of the continuity. But in the season 11 episode, Call the Cops, we get this scene. One too many goofy goobers again, eh, Patrick? That just probably means there's alcohol in the fucking ice cream. I don't think that means that they're, like, putting any brainwashing shit in there. the case with Goofy Goobers, they'd probably want to make sure everyone there eats as much ice cream as possible. And the Goofy Goober building is actually cleverly designed in a way to ensure that this happens. There are no windows in the entire building, so you can't tell whether it's day or night. And the Goofy Goober clock- That's casinos. <laughs> Wow, I that shit looks good as fuck. I'm not, dude, I don't give a fuck if that's cartoon ice cream. Oh, that looks good. Security, we have a sample mooch at the counter. But there's something oddly familiar about this employee. Hang on a second. Isn't that Patrick's sister? Hold up. This kid looks strung the fuck out. And no, that is not Patrick's sister. Are you on fucking crack? About this Are employee. you on fucking... Hang on a second. Isn't that Patrick's Her head's fucking square. How the fuck would she- or, or not square. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a square. Her head's fucking triangle. What the fuck? He's even credited as Squidina and has the same voice actor. Why would the creators go out of their way to specifically credit her as Squidina, unlike the other random employees who are just credited as employee? Feels like they're- mm, This is making sense. This is actually making sense, Liberal though. Spongebob not getting promoted to manager of the new Krusty Krab, a job that- Why would you put- that doesn't make any sense. SpongeBob I remember watching this shit and thinking it was the stupidest thing in the world. That would be like having a McDonald's here and then just opening another McDonald's literally five feet to the right. Grand opening, another McDonald's that's literally a walkable distance away. He is touching the ground, standing straight up. That is impossible. I think there's actually a lot more going on here than it seems. This was such a good movie. I forgot about SpongeBob. This place is actually a former Goofy Goobers establishment that was abandoned. I mean, they literally have the Goofy Goober theme song on hand. SpongeBob, it's the Goofy Goober theme song. And they claim that no kids are allowed here, yet we see some old kid-sized handprints in the bathroom. Mm. If this really is a former Goofy Goobers, then these guys would probably know the truth about the cult, which would explain why they're so against having anyone who's not manly in the bar. It's not oh, because they Oh, shit! It's, it's they used to be in the cult. It's because they're trying to keep out a dangerous cult. This scene made me cry. Are you fucking kidding me? You cried at this SpongeBob scene. We get to the climactic finale of the movie. SpongeBob returns to the Krusty Krab, now a changed man. He has to battle Plankton and his army of mind-controlled slaves, and this is how the final confrontation plays out. And if I've learned anything during that time, it's that you are who you are. So yeah, I'm a kid, and I'm also a goofball, and a wingnut, and a knucklehead McSpazitron! <laughs> knucklehead McSpazitron. What the fuck? But most of all, I'm... Okay, settle down. I'm... Take it easy. I'm... What the scallop? I'm a goofy goober! I'm a goofy goober. Oh, so actually the movie ended terribly because now he's a part of the cult. But in reality, this is the moment that he has gone past the point of no return and becomes a goofy goober. Mmm... Now, this is normally when I pretend like the video was over and then surprise you with a last minute twist, but... 
I don't need to pretend this time. If you think this entire video has been insane rambling and none of this could possibly be intentional, well then just for you, I have saved my best piece of evidence for last. Are you ready? While Spongebob sings the Goofy Goober song, we cut to him standing on the world and getting abducted by a UFO. And even the UFO's lights make a pattern of red, yellow, red, which is eerily similar to the Goofy Goober UFO that has two red cherries with a yellow banana in the middle. And that is the Goofy Goober alien death cult theory. I give up. I give up. Why your childhood is ruined. Oh. What a fucking rip. What a rip, dude. Well, wouldn't that be like a legitimate religion then instead of a cult if it's right? Have we seen this one? I don't know. I gotta piss first. Hold up. So I showed a bit of this conspiracy guy's reaction in my last video, and apparently he didn't like that, so now he's claiming that I'm part of some giant Illuminati conspiracy. Somebody looks like they're a puppet for the Illuminati. He's making SpongeBob conspiracy theories, and you're now you're claiming that he's a part of the Illuminati. Yes, you, you sir, have been inserting secret messages into your videos. But in the first SpongeBob movie, he's replaced by a completely different King Neptune who has a completely different daughter named Mindy. These guys don't look or sound at all the same, so how can they both exist in this universe? It's widely believed that the SpongeBob movie takes place in the future after the events of the show. So widely believed that I got hundreds of comments about it in my Mrs. Puff theory. Yep, I, I know, I know guys, I heard, I heard what you said. The creator of SpongeBob, Steven Hillenburg, said he wanted to end the series with the movie, and it being canonically at the end of the SpongeBob timeline would explain why we never see the Krusty Krab 2 or any of the other characters from the movie in the later SpongeBob episodes. Oh, because the show didn't end, but it was supposed to. Or is that when he left? And we do actually briefly see Neptune's daughter Mindy show up later in the show in Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout. There's no way she'd be there unless the show took place after the events of the movie. Mm. I think what's actually going on here with Neptune is something much more interesting. And it ties directly in with the television theory. I think the real reason why Neptune looks so different in the movie is because the filmmakers couldn't get the real King Neptune, the literal god of the sea, to show up for a movie. So they hired an actor to pretend to be the king. And I was hoping for some fucking draw. Oh, maybe that is a Is he going to get into a different theory? I was hoping for some other shit. Not oh, he's a paid actor. There is actually a ton of evidence in the show to support this. King Neptune is supposed to live in the great city of Atlantis, but in the movie, he just lives in some random sand castle, almost like they just built a discount version for the movie. But the real evidence comes from season 10, episode 18, Lost and Found, where SpongeBob goes beneath the Krusty Krab to look for something in the Lost and Found. As he searches through this surprisingly massive collection of items, on one of the shelves, we see something mind blowing. The crown worn by King Neptune in the Spongebob movie. Why would it be there? Because he's a paid actor! Oh my god. In the third Spongebob movie, Sponge on the Run, the King of the Sea Wasn't this a shit movie? I didn't watch this. I feel like no one watched this fucking movie, but it's still, like, in the lore. Yet again, replaced by a new character, King Poseidon, the Greek god of the ocean. He actually does live in the city of Atlantis, except instead of the ancient royal architecture, it's a giant casino designed to make money. It'd be easy to Rep. say that these are just two separate kings that rule different areas of the sea, but they both claim to be the ruler of the seven seas. So, how can two different characters both be the king of the same seven seas? The answer to that question actually has to do with a place called Camp Coral. I just hate the animation of that. It looks fucking weird. The flashbacks of a young- What the fuck? Why does it matter? I remember stressing out watching the Spongebob show that Plankton would get the formula. If Plankton got the Krabby Patty formula, nothing's changing, right? It's still the Krabby Pat- Nothing's changing. So why does it matter? Mr. Krabs goes bankrupt. So the whole premise of the show is that we don't want Mr. Krabs to not be fucking rich. Well, this proves that Camp Coral and the movie that sets it up are in an alternate timeline. The events that have taken place in the show are not the same events in this movie. The continuity errors like Sandy and SpongeBob meeting or How Poseidon is it in an alternate timeline? What the 
fuck? The scene set of Neptune can be explained by this shift in the timeline. So there you go, King Poseidon and King Neptune are from completely separate timelines, that's why we never see any reference to King Poseidon in the show. And that is the Neptune theory. Huh, I mean that that wasn't so hard, I guess, I guess I'm done here. Neptune stirred up quite a gale tonight. He must be mad about something. <laughs> That's silly. Everyone knows Poseidon is ruler of the undersea. Episode 19, Spongehenge, shows two fish arguing over whether Neptune or Poseidon is the real ruler of the sea. I got a post, I do. The creators are directly telling I'll us that right both now. of these characters somehow exist in the same timeline, and it's our job to figure out how the puzzle pieces fit together. So, let's take a look. Despite both of these characters having similar appearances and personalities, there is one very important difference. Yeah, one of them's 3D Poseidon and one of them's 2D. Powers. We've seen many times that King Neptune has magic abilities that he can use at any time even without his trident but in the entire third spongebob movie we never see poseidon use any powers or magical abilities except for lighting up his trident but all he has to do for that is just flip a switch and we know from the episode trident trouble that you don't even need to be a god to use the trident and at the end of the third movie so he's just rich we find out Poseidon is actually in terrible shape. If you remember at the end of the episode Neptune's spatula, Neptune briefly turns Spongebob into a god, and we can see that having god powers gives you a perfect body. So why is Poseidon in such terrible shape? Because he's just a rich guy. Because he doesn't actually- Jeff Bezos? have powers. Only Neptune does. Even Neptune's wife, Queen Amphitrite, has to use technology to zap someone, unlike Neptune who only has to use his finger in the exact same episode. He is clearly the only one with powers. Bro really just said that the daughter of Neptune is bad. She's a fish. No, but like on God though, like dude, if she wasn't a fish, I'd hit her up. Home to a when you think about it, you could fucking, you could slaughter the Atlanteans. Their fucking brain is covered by glass. When his wife turns it off. Oh, Neptune. Surely this isn't the behavior. No, she's bad though, chat. Oh, she's bad though. He betrayed the Atlanteans and used their own weapons against them to conquer their home Damn. and turn it into a casino city. That's why Poseidon City is called the- Tut Tut Casino? That's not an Atlantic City. Lost City, even though it's not lost. It's referencing the Atlantean city that was conquered by Poseidon. And the reason why the Atlanteans gave god powers to some random abandoned baby to in the get it back was so that Neptune could take the throne from Poseidon and prevent him from conquering the alien city. And the reason why the Atlantean city mysteriously disappeared was because they hid it so no one could ever try and conquer them again. And that is the Neptune theory. I am done. Wow! What do you think he's going to do after he runs out of Spongebob conspiracy theories? He's probably going to go to another show. That's what I would do if I was him. Another popular show. All right. The Vanishing Flight. Oh, fuck. It already started.